All right, guys. So I actually had a couple messages while I was uh, eating my lunch, kind of. Wasn't really, I was drinking more coffee. Anyways, um, so I had a couple messages. So the first one, I'm not, I'm sorry, I don't do the, like, shout out to whoever at Twitter. I don't really give a crap. I'm sorry. I really don't. Um, I got one message. What was the surprise hit? What was the best surprise hit that you've played all year? Um, you know, everybody, everybody, uh, everybody's got something generic when they come up with this stuff. Um, so, like, surprise hit, like, oh, Journey, oh, Papa Wee, oh, and it's like, come on, you know, seriously, you, you saw these things in E3 and they look fantastic. I mean, that's, that's BS, you know what I mean? I mean, that's, <laughs> you saw the preview for that stuff and it looked fantastic, so get over yourself. Um, surprise hit, I, I like playing terrible games. I have played Bratz Rock Angels and, uh, I, I laughed hysterically. I was not inebriated in any way, shape, or form. Just naturally thought it was ridiculously hilarious. Um, you can give... The, mind you, this is totally off topic. Pick that game up if you ever want a good laugh. You, you, you dress them up. You dress them up. And, and you do their makeup and everything. So half of them had whore makeup. And then the other half, one of them had... I did like a camo thing. And they're being all serious about, like, saving their newspaper in this cutscene while half of them look like prostitutes more than usual and the other one's got, like, camo fatigue face paint. Uh, I'm sorry, that game's ridiculously amazing. But that was years ago. Anyways, best game that I played this year that was a surprise, not the best game I played this year, but most surprising game that I actually enjoyed. Um, that I didn't think I would enjoy had to be Sherlock Holmes. Um, and the testament of something or other. Um, it's totally, totally like a, like a Professor Layton style, but instead of Professor Layton ripping off Sherlock Holmes, it's Sherlock Holmes ripping off Professor Layton. That was really, really entertaining, though. Um, the, the whole time you're searching for the same killer, you're going from, from different area to different area, you're, you're going and looking for clues, and then you're going back, and you're finding new clues, and you're interrogating, and then it's got these, these riddle aspects to it, and then you actually play as his, his basset hound at, at some point. I mean, it, it's an Atlas game, I guess, <laughs> I guess maybe I just am an Atlas whore, but I actually really enjoyed it. It was actually a lot of fun. It was mindless. Don't pay 50 bucks for it. Do not pay 60 bucks for it. But I think I just saw it a couple weeks ago at GameStop for like 20 bucks. Um, 15, 20 bucks. It's worth a buy. If you like puzzle games, if you like mystery games, that that definitely was a really fun one. I really enjoyed it. I, I think if you enjoy puzzle games and stuff like that, you definitely will. Um, so pick that one up. And it actually encouraged me to pick up the um, the the Sherlock Holmes, Dr. Jack, or the that one, the versus Jack the Ripper, which I was like, that's the stupidest thing I've ever heard of. I totally want that now. I have it on my Christmas list, and I don't think anybody got it for me, so uh, I'm looking at everybody out there. I, I really wouldn't mind if you, you get me that game, so. Um, the other question was the, the, the best game out of the pile of games this morning because I'm done with PS3 now obviously and now we're at we're at 360 for Forza. The other question was what is the best one that I played out of the pile this morning? It's kind of tough. Um and the reason I say that is we'll go back over this morning. The one that I just played was Ratchet and Clank Crack in Time. Like I said, it, it was a great game. It's it's for a casual gamer. It's for um, it's for a hardcore gamer. It's for a kid. It's for a parent. It's for just an adult. Anybody. It's it's a really fun all around game, and it's it's worth it. I don't think it was the best one out of the pile though. Um, Persona Four Arena. I am a huge Atlas whore. I'm not gonna lie. Uh, if you're a fighter fan, this is the this is the one of the whole pile that I would suggest that you buy. It's it's absolutely fantastic. 
Um, it's great fighting style. The thing I love about Blaze Blue and Guilty Gear is it's such a hyper fighter, and you really have to good good. The 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 turnoff for a lot of people with the Blaze Blue series is you can't be good with one character and be able to jump to all the other characters and be you know decent or or even somewhat good at them. They, they each each and every one of them has a very particular play style that you have to get used to. So when you get used to one character, that's it. You're you're gonna. It's completely different than any other character on the on the the format. Um, Guilty Gear is a little bit more user friendly, but it's got that same stylization where there's really only going to be about three or four characters that you're going to be really good with, um, and then the rest are just completely different. And I always appreciate that. The little bit that I've played of Arena very much has that feel. Uh, it very much feels like you you have to get good with one or two characters and all the other ones you're just going to have to give up hope on unless you are dead set on getting good with all of them. But if you're ever just, you want to play one versus one on one, you want to play with your friends, getting good with one or two characters is pretty much the max that you're going to be able to do. Um, even though the, the basic fighting game style of, you know, left down, left down, punch, punch, it's going to be the same thing in pretty much every game. Um, the way that you have to play the character, if they have long range, short range, if they're a, a slower character, they're a heavier hitting character, they all play very, very differently. So um, Axis Games does a great job of really defining each and every character and, and how they play um, and, and make, giving them their own play styles and making them unique. So it's a turnoff for a lot of people. Persona 4 is actually a little more friendly than Blaze Blue, though. Um, so Persona 4 is a lot easier to pick up and play and, and get the hang of and be decent at a lot faster than Blaze Blue. So um, this one's kind of on my tie list, to be honest with you. Uh, Little Big Planet Karting. It's fantastic. I wouldn't put it on Game of the Year or anything like that. It's definitely worth a buy. It's really entertaining, but it wasn't my favorite out of this morning. So, um, and see, so some of these, the reason I see that some of these are tricky is I've got stuff like God of War Saga and Ratchet and Clank HD Collection. And these are collections, HD collections of games that were so phenomenal on the PS2 that people actually wanted to rebuy them in HD. They wanted to buy them a second, third, fourth, or fifth time again for more money. You just want to throw more money. These have got to be fan favorite ones. They weren't my favorite. Um, I've done them. They're great, whatever. This was a surprise to me how much I really enjoyed this. Um, like I said, I'm, I've never really been a, a Smash Brothers fan. Um, this is one of these, though, that I'm definitely going back to after all of this is done and, and playing further, playing more of the storyline on, um, just because it's actually really, really entertaining. So this was good. So, and this is another one, too. This is one that was so good that people were like, I want to spend money on that two or three times. Um, Zone of the Enders, it, it's kind of faded into obscurity at this point, which is which is really sad. Um, I worked for GameStop for 10 years, and when I started working for GameStop back in 2002, I'm dating myself here, but back in 2002, Zone of the Enders was the game. Like, all the elitist nerds, all the nerds, everybody knew about this game, everybody played this game, everybody loved this game. Um, and just since, like, 2006, 2007, I've heard zero mention of this game. Do not pass this game up. It is worth replaying. If you've never had the opportunity to play this game, it is worth playing. It's a really, really, really fun, hyper um, action shooter, melee attack mech game. And there's really no mech games. So, I mean, you really, there's no competition for this. Buy it. The game that was the best that I've played all morning is this one. Journey. I've been told since this game came out that I need to play it and it's remarkable and blah 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 blah. 
I have referenced it in articles, I've referenced it in blogs, I've referenced it in, in talking about games as art. Because I've seen the screenshots, because I've seen the videos for it. Um, I will honestly say, watching a video or seeing a screenshot, it has nothing on actually playing this game. I, I seriously... I didn't record the video properly earlier, I am going back and doing it tomorrow just to show you guys how absolutely wonderful this game is. Um, I personally cannot wait to just put my headset on. Um, I have one of the surround sound headsets, the, the, the Triton uh, AX720s. Um, turn off all the lights, just play by myself. Um, this is it's, it's an experience, and that's what makes games art, is that it's not just, you know, an entertainment or, you know, escape or anything like that. You're literally feeling a, a full-on experience, like a life experience. Um, and I don't mean to make it sound so, like, overdramatic, but, but seriously, if, if you haven't played it, you, you, when you play it, if you haven't played it yet, you will understand. Uh, it genuinely feels like an experience, so... Um, so those were the questions that I had real quick. So um, Journey is the best of this morning. This is absolutely a go out and buy. I would suggest doing the collector's edition. This is 30 bucks. You've got Journey, you've got Flower, you've got Flow. So three fantastic games in there, 30 bucks. It's well worth it. I think it actually comes with some, some extra tidbits and everything too in here. Oh, one month of PlayStation Plus which I don't mean to shove salesmanship down your throat, guys, but if you don't have PlayStation Plus, you're an idiot. Um, just plain and simple. It's 50 bucks for a year. They have more than 20 games that are free right now on there. So, like, Super Street Fighter 4 Arcade, Bioshock 2. Um, I think Jet Set Radio is one of the free ones right now. I'm, I'm probably mistaken. Um, and then it just went up for the Vita. So if you have a PS3 and you have a Vita, they'll link together and um, you can download all the stuff that's free on there. You get all the discounts. Um, you get the automatic updates. Uh, you have cloud saves. So it's it's a ton packed in there. You can pretty much spend the 50 bucks for the full year. And if you really only play a couple games a year, the 50 bucks for the full year, you get those 20 games, you can kind of go through, they're always changing them around. As long as you have the Plus membership, they're on your system. So, especially if you're a more casual gamer, that is a fantastic buy. Uh, if you're a hardcore gamer, it's still a fantastic buy. I think, to me, PlayStation Plus, there's no reason not to get it if you if you play, even just once a month. So, um, that's that's my little pedestal. Now back to the game -a -thon. So... I'm going to go ahead and log this. Uh, I've got Forza running up next, so um, we'll, we'll get to it. <laughs> 